a very warm welcome to our service today. My name is Louise and I am presiding today. We've got Kate, who is our liturgist, and Kerry is preaching this morning. As we come to this together, this Matariki weekend, across the weekend perhaps some of you may have spent time with family and friends sharing a meal or enjoying one another's companionship. Some of you may have ventured outdoors and perhaps taken time to walk beside the water or, or maybe you've spent a bit of time in the garden tending some of those weeds and, and plants that have got out of hand. Perhaps some of you may, can, may have taken time out to see if you could catch a, a glimpse of the stars. Of course, that's in between the wonderful Auckland rain and cloudy weather at the moment. And maybe some of you took time to pause to remember those who are no longer with us, those whose memories we cherish. Today we come to worship God, the one who creates, the one who intimately knows the cycle of life, whose creation we can only gaze at and wonder. Our opening hymn today captures a little of that awe, so as we stand, we're going to do our usual stand and turn around and say hello to those around us. But our opening hymn is All Creatures of Our God and King. Our, the words will be on the screen. So turn to those around you, say hello, and let's sing together our opening worship hymn. Thank you. Good morning. I'll add my welcome to Louise's, and yes, I'm Kate, and I'm your liturgist this morning. Our service will continue on the screen if you would uh, join in with the bold type. Thank you. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our creator, the love at our beginning, and without end, in our midst and with us. God, God is with us, here, here we find new life. life. Let us give thanks for the coming of God's reign of justice and love. Jesus Christ is good news for the poor, release for the captives, recovery of sight for the blind, and liberty for those who are oppressed. O oh, give thanks to our God who is good, his love endures forever. You sun and moon, you stars of the southern sky, give, O our God, your thanks and praise. Sunset, sunrise and sunset, night and day, give to our God your thanks and praise. All mountains and valleys, grassland and scree, glacier, avalanche, mist and snow, give to our God your thanks and praise. Eucori and pine, rata and kofi, 
mosses and ferns. Give to your God your thanks and praise. Dolphins and kawai, sea lion and crab, coral and anemone, pippi and shrimp. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Rabbits and cattle, moss and dogs, kiwi and sparrow and tui and hawk. Give to our God your thanks and praise. You Maori and Pakeha, women and men, all who inhabit the long white cloud. Give to our God your thanks and praise. All you saints and martyrs of the South Pacific, Give to our God your thanks and praise. We now will sit or kneel as comfortable for a time of confession. Happy are those whose sins are forgiven, whose wrongs are pardoned. I will confess my sin to the Lord. I will not conceal my wrongdoings. God forgives and heals us. We need your healing, merciful God. Give us true repentance. Some sins are plain to us. Some escape us. Some we cannot face. Forgive us. Set us free to hear your word to us. Set us free to serve you. God forgives you. Forgive others, forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away your sin. Approach your God in peace. So I ask you to sit and get comfortable. Um, the youth are going to stay with us uh, today, but the kids are going to go out. So I'll just pray for them as they go out to their ministry. Gracious Father, we thank you that we can all come together and worship you, young and old. And we just pray that your hand would be on the children and on Izzy as she teaches them, Lord, that they would know more of you. In Jesus' name, amen. And we will say, I will say um, the sentence. My word that goes out of my mouth shall not return to me empty, but shall accomplish that which I purpose. And we will say together the prayer of the day. Blessed are you, God of all creation, for you have us abundantly, thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. We praise you for the harvest and for the assurance of food and drink for another year. Strengthen us as we enjoy what we are given to help the hungry and the poor. Amen. And please would the readers come forward. Thank you. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 15, beginning at verse 10. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. 
Thanks be to God. The second reading today is taken from Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, The mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13, beginning at verse 1. Praise Praise and glory to God. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. 
Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the word. Would you like to be seated? In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. As uh, Louise remarked in her introduction uh, and welcome to us, I'm sure that many of us will have been enjoying this long uh, weekend of Matariki. Uh, as we will know, Matariki is a cluster of stars that rises in the eastern sky. It signals the winter solstice, or solstice and is now marked with a national holiday. Matariki means tiny eyes or eyes of God. Matariki is the mother of the stars and the cluster known as Pleiades. The stars helped our Māori ancestors navigate across the Pacific Ocean to reach Aotearoa. They indicated seasonal cycles of trees, planting and harvest time, and the migration of fish. The stars had a lot to do with community survival. Many of the narratives of the ancestors, like other cultures, are placed in the constellation of the night sky. It was also a time to memorialize those loved ones that had passed away and to contemplate learnings from the past year and to look forward to the future. In traditional Māori culture, there is a custom known as whāngai ho. Whāngai meaning to feed and ho meaning wind or spirit. People would prepare a ritual hāngi, recite karakia, and after a few hours lift the hāngi out of the ground. The steam from the hāngi would rise as a sacred offering of thanksgiving for the stars and resources of the land. As followers of Christ in Aotearoa, can we participate in Matariki in a meaningful way without diluting our faith? Well, what does the Bible teach us about the stars and the seasons and how we are to engage with them? The stars are there to glorify the Lord, not to be glorified or given homage, or even worshipped. We are called to praise God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, not to praise creation. The heavenly bodies were created by God to give light, to separate light from darkness, and as seasonal indicators. Deuteronomy 4.19 is very clear. When you look up at the sky, and see the sun and the moon and the stars, do not be enticed into bowing down to them. 
Psalm 19 verse 1 says the heavens declare the glory of God. The sky declares the handiwork of God. And in our Benedicity Aotearoa that we said earlier, we the people of this land, along with the sun and moon, the stars of the southern sky, and all of God's creation, are to give God our thanks and praise. We can look at the sky knowing that it formed the backdrop to our Christian faith. In the New Testament, the wise men looked to the heavens and followed the stars to find the location of the newborn king in Bethlehem. In Matthew 16, Jesus rebukes those who can read the seasonal cycles yet are blind to the signs of the times. So both Māori and Christian traditions speak of the role of the heavenly bodies in our lives. With this in mind, we can celebrate Matariki as many do. We can wake at dawn, locate Matariki in the sky and glorify God, praising the one who created the heavens and the stars, breaking bread together and contemplate the past, the present and the days to come. Through our faith, we can let the stars continually point us to the King of Kings. Praise Him, the Creator of the stars. God, as we know, is continually active in creation in both the heavens and the earth. As I read the readings for today, earlier in the week in preparing my sermon, the gospel brought to mind a story for me that I had once heard about a missionary or an early missionary working with Māori in the area of the central North Island. The missionary wanted to highlight the importance of working closely with God and undertaking tasks faced in daily life. Somewhat like being partnered or yoked to Christ, as our theme and sermon touched upon last week by Louise. The work at hand was an area of land that for as long as anyone could remember was overgrown, strewn with rocks, and quite the chore to bring into productive use. Aha, this was the project he thought could be used to illustrate the benefit of working alongside God. One rather elderly woman was quite absorbed by what the missionary was saying. Over the next several weeks, she made it her personal commitment to tirelessly work this area, eventually turning it into an attractive and fertile tract of land. Sometime later, when the missionary saw the transformation that had occurred, he could not believe his eyes at the large, carefully laid out garden ready for planting. Ecstatic, he remarked to the woman, isn't it wonderful, the results that occur when we work with the Lord? I, the woman nodded. You should have seen this place when he had it all to himself. Clearly, the profound lesson that being in relationship with God is more to our advantage than God's was still to be learned. Like the missionary in this story, Jesus uses the land to demonstrate a spiritual principle. This parable is, is once again based on an aspect of the everyday life of his listeners. Isn't that often the best way we learn? when the point of something we're trying to grasp is set out in familiar terms. Jesus' description of the process of sowing seed was realistic. Here was a farmer at the time of planting, walking through their fields, scattering seed by hand. Of course, not all the seed lands in the most favourable spot. Pests, weeds and climate 
play their part to undermine growth, depending on where the seed came to rest. A first seed group falls along the path and quickly disappears into the beaks of birds. It represents those who hear but fail to understand the message of God's reign. Indeed, the evil one removes what had been sown. The second seed group lands on rocky ground where it swiftly spouts only to wither under the scorching sun because nourishing roots are lacking. This depicts those who are receptive to the message yet their enthusiasm does not survive. The third seed group comes to rest amongst thorns preventing growth to maturity representing anxiousness and concerns that hinder one's faith. But all is not lost. A fourth seed group, benefiting from its location and favourable soil, yields the farmer a bumper crop. This is where God wants his seed to fall. This parable fixes our attention on the activity of the sower and therefore on God's good news for the world. The ministries we offer here at St Aidan's can be viewed as situations in which we ourselves are the sower. Walking through a field, be that of prison or hospital ministry, retirement village visits, pastoral outreach, supporting the city mission, and efforts that assist the needs of women and children and charitable purposes. The repeated images of seed failure are illustrations of God's work that does not always succeed in finding fertile, receptive hearts. Some people will not be open to our actions and message, and some will not persist in faithful practice. This parable reassures all Jesus' followers that if we persevere, even against the odds, what we do really does matter. What we say, how we respond to others, how we welcome and reach out to people who come through the doors of our church and our mission shop, and how we embody the gospel message in our ministries does make a difference. What we do will bear fruit, whether in individual lives, various communities, or in wider society. We may not be able to do much about the conditions in which seed-devouring birds, poor roots, and suffocating thorns engender discouragement and despair rather than hope. But we must always move forward in faithful perseverance in serving God. Because at the centre of this action is the sure and certain belief that what goes out from God shall not return empty, but it shall accomplish and succeed in its purpose, as spoken by the prophet Isaiah. And as followers of Christ, we must be careful not to fall victim to the seed nurtured in our hearts, being choked in the weeds of a spiritless life. In his letter to the Romans, Paul observes that in the life of a Christian, sin characterised as fleshy weakness still has influence. His direction to believers is not to give sin any foothold or power, for we are to live according to the Spirit and to set our minds on the Spirit because the Spirit flows from God and God and God guides our steps. Let me close with prayer. Lord God, like the stars of the night sky, your spirit is given to us as a guiding light. May we be your light and support to guide those seeking you, that we may share a brightness of heart and cheerful welcome with our minds always set on following your spirit. Amen.
Thank you, Kerry, for your words of encouragement. Um, please sit and kneel as we pray before our God, our Father. And the bidding um, today um, for ete, ete atua araha, um, the response is whakarongo mai ki tamato inoe. Might want to practice that one again. Ete atua araha, whakarongo mai ki tamato inoe. Let us pray. Thank you for your gift of creation. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing world in all its beauty and diversity. May we be good caretakers of its rich resources. May we consider our own footprint. May we not be wasteful. And may we only use the things that we really need. May we reuse, repurpose and recycle as we can. We pray for those who make decisions about the resources of the earth. We ask you to guide them and that they may not be influenced by greed. Ete atua aroha, whakarongo mai ki tamato inoe. Thank you for our country of New Zealand. We pray for those who govern nationally and locally. We pray for the elections taking place this year. Lord, we pray that those who are given power may work towards good for all levels of society. We ask your blessing for those who are experiencing the ongoing hardship due to the severe weather events in recent months. We ask for peace in their hearts, provision for their lives, strength to rebuild what was lost, and hope for the future. We pray for those who work to restore the roading network. We pray that you would keep them safe. And we pray for those who make decisions about infrastructure. Lord, it is a huge problem to mend all of the roads. It seems insurmountable, but you are the God of miracles. Ete atua aroha, whakarongo mai ki tamato inoe. We thank you for our St. Aidan's Church family. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us together as a community to serve you. Grant that we may always work together to your glory. Show us how we can faithfully serve you, serve each other, and serve the community of Remuera. We pray for your strength, continued health and inspiration for Kerry and Louise. We thank you for those on the vestry who give their time for the management of our church and for all who serve. Ete atua aroha, whakarongo mai ki tamato inoi. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. We thank you for our families, our friends and our neighbours, for all those who enrich our lives. Give us the continued gift of faith in you. Help us to live our lives, live lives that reflect who we are in you. Send your Holy Spirit to inspire us and guide us. May we be your faithful servants to the end of our lives. Ete atua aroha, whakarongo mai ki tamato inoi. God, you shape our dreams. As we put our trust in you, may our hopes and our desires May your hopes and desires be ours, and we, your expectant people. Amen. And let us conclude our prayers by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the fire of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We come now to a time when we share the peace. I invite you to stand. Blessed be Christ, the Prince of Peace, who breaks down the walls that divide. The peace of God be always with you. Praise to Christ, who unites us in peace. So I invite you to share words of peace or gestures of peace now with one another. And we stand together to sing our offertory hymn, We Plough the Fields and Scatter. Thanks, Antoinette.
yes, we do thank you, God. And we thank you for the offerings that have been given this morning too. We thank you for the, the food for the city mission. We thank you for the, the bread and wine that's been brought forward. We thank you for the gifts of money that will carry out ministry in this place. For all these things, we thank you. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. God's, God's Spirit, Spirit is with us. us. Got a few technical difficulties, haven't we? There we go. We lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise, as it is indeed right always and everywhere to give thanks to you, the true and living God, through Jesus Christ. You are the source of life for all creation, and you made us in your own image. In your love for us, you sent your Son to be our Saviour. In the fullness of time, he became incarnate and suffered death on the cross. You raised him in triumph and exalted him in glory, and through him you send your Holy Spirit upon your church and make us your people. And so we proclaim your glory as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Do you indeed be glory, almighty God? Because on the night before he died, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. So with thanksgiving and hope we say, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Your death we show forth, your resurrection we proclaim, your coming we await. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Therefore, loving God, recalling now Christ's death and resurrection, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and our celebration, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son and be filled with your life and goodness. Strengthen us to do your work and to be your body in the world. United in Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we raise to you, our God, our songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honour and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Christ's body was broken for us on the cross. Christ is the bread of life. His blood was shed for our forgiveness. Christ is risen from the dead. So come, God's people come to receive Christ's heavenly food. You might like to be seated as uh, we prepare ourselves up the front. And just a reminder, there's hand sanitizer as you come forward. Wafers are in the centre, followed by the wine and the common chalice, and then grape juice on the outer edge.
so as we are filled with joy always, let us say our prayer after communion. Most loving God, creator and redeemer, we give you thanks for this foretaste of your glory. Through Christ and with all your saints, we offer ourselves and our lives to your service. Send us out in the power of your spirit to stand with you in your will. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the servant, our friend and brother. Amen. So as we go from here, filled with the Spirit's power, may God be your comfort and your strength. May God be your hope and support. May God be your light and your way. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer and giver of life be with you today and always. Amen. Come now to our time of celebrations and anniversaries. And if we've got any particular celebrations, Lynn, birthday, wedding anniversary, what have we got? Or something else? A new, A new granddaughter. Oh, how very exciting. Congratulations. That's wonderful news. That's a real blessing. Anything else? Oh, we got at the back, yes? Lachlan, is it? Birthday? You passed your music ex piano exam, yes! Yay, well done. That's right, he told me after everyone had left and he was walking out. I said, but you didn't put your hand up for a lolly. So we promised this week. Kate, while you're back down there, uh, don't go too far away because somebody else dobbed Mari Taylor in, even though Mari Taylor hasn't got a hand up. She's probably thinking, why am I being dobbed in? I was told by a Mr. Nigel, that's all I'll say, um, that your son-in-law, Brent Patterson, won the British Senior Amateur Golf Championship, played in England over the last four days. And I'm told that this is an incredible achievement, winning by five strokes against 170 of the world's best senior amateurs, effectively the world championship for amateur golfers over 60 years in age. That's what Nigel Brown said anyway. <laughs> so you better take a chocolate, Mari. <laughs> Rightio. Um, please have a look at our newsletter for things coming up. I know I advertised it last week, Women's Evening Fellowship. I, had, I was a week early. Uh, Coffee and K's this week. They're doing a loop over by the Auckland Domain, so praying for fine weather, but um, that group is growing and growing, so do watch out for that or go and join them and see what it's all about. We've got the quiz coming up. The young people have got... Um, I did announce it again last week, but the, the young people have got a comedy night coming up on the 26th of July, and all the, fun, all the funds from that night go to the young adults who are going to Jerusalem. So it's a wonderful opportunity. So even if comedy's not your thing, if you know of somebody else who enjoys a comedy night out, tell them about it. It would be great if they can fill that place. Is there anything else that would be helpful to say about it? It's a good night out. Talk to Isabel if you want to know a little bit anything more. Magazine where the Anne's beginning to get that organised with Isabel and they're looking for material. So our overarching theme is stepping out. So have a little look um, at what they're looking for and if you can put pen to paper or fingers to the keyboard, do contribute to make our magazine a successful one. That will do. Tea and coffee after the service as usual. And our final hymn, Fakari Amai. Let's stand to close our service. <laughs>
grace be with you. Thanks be to God. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. So at, at um, eight o'clock, I said, "Lift up your hand to God's um, son." Yeah, that, that oh, well done. Quite